Samplers is simpler, bigger brother, has a lot more features and some features we can't find there. But the main difference is that the sampler can handle multi-sampled instruments. So first of all, here I have an empty MIDI track and I'm taking this guitar loop from the Drive and Glow pack. You can download it for free if you have Ableton Suite. Let's check it out. Now I'm focused on this MIDI track and down here it says drop an instrument or sample here. So I'm just gonna drop it down there. and It's already gonna load it inside Simpler. At any point you can right click on the Simpler title and choose and switch it to Sampler. Nice, so first let's go over the Sample tab. So here we can see the sample displayed. We can play it. And one thing we'll notice is unlike the simpler where we can warp, we can time stretch samples, here there's no time stretching. So if I play a lower note, it's also gonna be slower. If I play a higher note, it's gonna be faster. Nice. Right here, we can reverse the sample, which will basically reverse the playback. Here we can turn on and off snap, and snap will snap the locators, the start and end markers, to the zero crossing, where the waveform meets the middle night, the zero amplitude. So if we uh, zoom in, and we start to drag it, we see it kind of skips around because it's snapping to the zero crossing. So if I turn off the snap, now it moves freely, but this can introduce some clicks and pops. So if you do uh, encounter some clicking or popping sound, turn on the snap. Here we have which sample is currently selected. Right now in this video, we're just gonna use one sample and in other videos, we'll see how to use multi samples in one, simpler, in one sampler. Here is the root note of the sample. If you already know the root note and you want it to be aligned to the keyboard, you can change it from here. So if I hold C, C3 is gonna play the original uh, pitch of the sample, but we can change it, for example, to F sharp. We can see right here in the sample, it's F sharp minor. So, so now it should be aligned uh, to our keyboard. You can also change the pitch uh, from the pitch tab, which we'll talk about in other videos. Let's go back. Nice, you can also detune the sample 50 cents or 50 cents, 50 cents up or 50 cents down. Some uh, old samples, especially from vinyl and stuff like that, might be slightly off tune, uh, so you can detune them to make sure it fits with your project. The scale, we make sure that if it's 100%, uh, it's completely melodically spread across your keyboard. But for example, if I take it down to zero, now there's no pitch tracking, so it doesn't matter what note I hit, it will always play the same pitch. You, know, you can even inverse how the pitch is spreading and stretch it uh, to 200, so there's uh, even more uh, pitch uh, uh, spreading across the keyboard. Volume is we're gonna change the actual volume of the sample and we're gonna see it displayed in the sample display. Panning. It's not going to happen in real time. You will have to re-trigger the sample uh, to hear the panning. So if I trigger it and then change it, we won't hear it until the next time we trigger the sample. Here we can change the sample start. We can also change it from this marker right here. And the sample end, which we can also change from right here. Let's bring it down. Let's zoom in on the first note. Just click and drag on the sample display. Nice, so sustain mode, what happens when we hold the note? Right now we're just playing and stopping when it reaches the end. We can also have it uh, looping uh, forward. So here now we have another bracket, that's the loop bracket right here. And we also have a mode where it's playing backward and forward. We can change where the sample is starting and where the loop is starting. So let's change the loop start. Let's bring it forward. Let's turn off snap. Let's bring it forward. So now the sample will start from the beginning, from the sample start, and the loop will only loop in the, around the loop brackets. Here is the loop end, and both the loop start and the loop end can be adjusted from here. 
We can cross fade between the starting and the ending of the loop to make it a bit more seamless. And we can even detune the loop in, uh, the sustain loop, if we want to match it to the rest of the sample. Nice. We also have the release mode. Right now the release is short, so let me go to the filter global tab and bring up the release. So now when I release the notes, it's still going to play the sample. And then we can tell what type of looping uh, has the release. There is the release have maybe just playing uh, all the way through the end marker. Maybe it's looping forward. And we can see now we have a, a few types of brackets. We have the main loop, the sustain loop, and we also have the release loop. And we can have it uh, going forward and backwards. Only when I release, of course can add, we can change where the release loop is actually happening. So now the sample will start from here. It will loop this section as I hold it, as I sustain the note, and when I release it, it's going to loop this section. Let's cause fade the release mode, the release loop. And we can even detune that. So you can create some very advanced loop in here thanks to the sustain mode and the release mode. You can also link the sample start and the loop start. So now when you move the loop, also the starting of the sample moves together, they're linked. Here we can zoom in. Let me turn down the sample so we can see the zoom in. We can zoom in on the sample display. This won't change the sample except the visuals of it. We can decide what we're displaying, both the left and the right channels, mono, the left channel, or the right channel. Here we can change the, interpol in the interpolation, which will decide how accurate are the transposed samples. So when we go higher or lower in pitch, um, and you can bring it up with the cost of more CPU, which will help with some anti-aliasing, especially in the very high frequencies. Here you can turn on RAM, which will load all the samples in the sampler uh, to be loaded from the RAM memory instead of the hard the disk, instead of the hard drive. Uh, this is very useful if you have a huge project with a lot of samples and your hard drive is not fast enough to read all those samples, you can try to load some of them into the RAM memory. Nice, we can also right click on the sample display. Here we can manage the sample, which will open up uh, the manage uh, files window on the right, show us the samples that we're using inside the sampler. We can switch them here and we can edit. We can show it in browser, so it will jump to wherever it is in the browser. So let me go to a different place and show in browser. It jumps to where it is. We can normalize volumes, which will max out uh, all the uh, range of volumes to zero. If you have a very quiet sample, that can help. And you can also normalize the pan, which will take the, uh, all the sample and equal the volume across the stereo spectrum. And you can see here it changed the pan to 6. Let's see it again. Right click, normalize pan. It changed that to 6 right. We can zoom in on the played region, zoom in on sustain loop. We can zoom in on release loop, and we can just zoom out. So that is the sample tab in sampler.